From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. Mackenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. West Texas, 1875. Although many Indian nations had made peace with the settlers, the Apaches still sought revenge from those who had invaded their land. Billy Stone fought valiantly for his life. gagging around this fort, my son was scalped. I've heard enough. I'm sorry about what happened to Billy. You're sorry! But you know what I'm up against. And you know the Apaches. You've been in this country 30 years, you ought to know them. There just aren't enough men to patrol this whole territory. We do the best we can. As for my men lollygagging around, as you put it, they're on duty 16 hours a day. I've got 1,500 square miles to patrol, 1,500 square miles. I've got reports of Apache raids here, and here, and here at Bitter Creek, and then again up here at Stanton's Crossing, 400 miles away. I can't do the impossible. The fact remains, my son is dead. You're the army. What are you going to do about it? Rich, Rich, there's nothing I can do about it. I know those Apaches are 100 miles away. I'm not talking about just those Apaches. I'm talking about every mother's son of them. I've spent over half my life fighting them. They killed my two sons. They killed... They killed the woman who bore them. I've built up the biggest spread in the entire state of Texas. For what? For the dust of my family? Well, they haven't killed me yet. Oh, they have tried. But before they do, I'll avenge Billy and the others a hundred times over. It takes time, Rich. Time and men. Please give me the time. Ronald, we've been friends ever since you took over at this point. I'm sorry for what I said. I understand, Rich. I understand. I don't think you do. You said it takes time and men. But you forgot one other thing. Money. Well, I don't know how much time I've got. But I've got plenty of money. What are you getting at? I won't rest easy, and neither will my kin. Until we even the score with those savages. I never saw so much of nothing in my whole life, Colonel. A dozen Apaches could be right under our noses. Uh, no doubt they're sneaky. Reckon we'll ever see the last of them. Wonder how often they've asked that question about us. Colonel, Apaches, over there. No, it's a Comanche hunting party. Well, I can't say I'm sorry. I wish all Indians were as peaceable as they are. I can remember when they weren't so peaceable. So can you, Sergeant. I sure can. Reckon they'll find any game over there? I'll get the other one! 
Well, if they got a deer, I'll give them my shirt for a nice hunk of that venison. You getting sick of fat back and beans? Just about like you, Colonel. Tribe? No Indian did this. Know who this is? It's Standing Elk's nephew. Yeah, but why? I don't know. Let's find out. Lead into Richard Stone's range line. Maybe Stone or one of his men saw him. Might know who they are. Maybe. Every time I come this way, I like to stop and just look at it. Stone may have paid too high a price for it. Yeah, I reckon you're right. What with the Indian scalp and his son last month on top of everything else. She was a remarkable woman, Ronald. I wish you could have known her. You'd have liked her. I'm sure I would have. I never remarried. She begged me to when she was dying, but there was never another one like her. Oh, can I offer you something? Uh, no, thank you. Well, uh, what are you doing out here? Right to the point, Rich. Who were they? Who were they? Which one of your hands did it? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. I followed two sets of tracks from Medicine Rocks to your ranch yard. Yes. Three Comanche braves, one of them Standing Elk's nephew, were ambushed and murdered at Medicine Rocks. Comanches? That's right, Yamparica Comanches. Peaceful for almost a year. How do you know it wasn't Apaches that killed them? You know it wasn't Apaches. How would I know? I'll spell it out for you. A month ago, you were in my office swearing revenge against all Apaches for their murder of your son, Billy. You said it would take the one thing you had, money. I say you hired scalp hunters, Rich. Only they made a mistake. Or else they didn't care whose hair they lifted as long as it was Indian. All right, all right, I did hire them. But you want the Apaches dead as much as I do. And it's your job to kill them. I hired men to do what your troopers weren't doing. And to repay those savages for what they've done to me. Oh, you let me tell you this, Rich. I don't want the Apaches dead. I want them at peace. And it's not my job to kill them. It's my job to make them our friends. It's men like you, as well as the Indians, who keep this fighting alive. And as for your precious revenge, how are you going to feel when, because of your stupidity, this entire community is attacked by a heretofore peaceful tribe? Your friends will be killed, your neighbors, just like your wife and your two sons were killed. 
All right, Ronald. I tried to face you down, but I can't. I made a mistake. You're right. Those men didn't care whose scalp they lifted. I hired the wrong men. But I promise you this. I'll find them and I'll take them before Standing Elk myself. We'll all face them. That ought to keep him from making war. Hmm. Who were these men you hired? Strobel and Cobb. Strobel. Of all the scum in Brackettville, he's the lowest. Where were they headed when they left here? Said they were going to Mexico. Where in Mexico? I don't know. But what difference does it make? You couldn't go after them. Well, you're right about one thing, Rich. You are going to face Standing Elk when I send for you to come to my office. Understood? Understood. Sergeant. Take the men back to the fort. Oh, and Sergeant, contact Horgan in Brackettville. Have him come to my quarters after dark tonight. Sir? After I talk with Chief Standing Elk, and if Horgan can answer a few questions, you and I may be taking a little trip. Yes, sir. Troopers, form on me. Drums mourn for our dead hunters. I have come to mourn with them, Standing Elk, and with you. Why have the Apaches killed my nephew and the others? We have done them no harm. Chief Standing Elk, they were not killed by the Apaches. Your straight tongue has saved your life for a time, Mackenzie Colonel. Before he died of a bullet in his back, Little Bear crawled to the village and told of the ambush by the men called Strobel and Cobb. I have come to promise you that those men will be punished. That must be. In three days, unless they are punished, Black Hand, the war chief, has promised many scalps of your people. But in three days, I can't... I am only medicine chief. In peace, my people listen to me. Now it is the war chief they turn to, for peace has been broken. You can't give me more than three days? If I could, I would not. Three days, Mackenzie Colonel. One of the most closely guarded secrets at Fort Clark, Texas in the middle and late 70s was the existence of an army within an army. The Raiders, hand-picked men for hand-picked assignments. Just as closely guarded a secret was the existence of a select group of men who funneled information to Mackenzie regarding the movements of the lawless elements in and around Brackettville. One such man was Frank Horgan. Exactly the kind of an offer Strobel would jump at. To stop the Comanches from making war, I've got three days. Are you sure he's in Mexico? The only thing I'm sure of is that if you don't find exactly where he is, we've wasted a lot of years of fighting and dying. 
One thing, if he is in Mexico, it'll be somewhere in the hills. He's got a reward on his head down there. He'd never go into a village. All right. Comanche's given me three days. You know how much time that gives you. Yes, sir. Just one thing. Be careful. Get all the information you can, but don't let anybody in Brackettville know what you're doing. I don't want you to end up with a knife in your back. I'm not anxious for that myself, Colonel. I'll do what I can. Good luck. Yes, come in. Yes, Sergeant. Telegraph report from Lieutenant Donahue, sir. Read it, please. Relayed from Chotner Lookout Station. Report large movement Comanche south. For instructions, made no contact. Signed, Lieutenant J. Donahue. Black Hand has gotten in touch with the Quaddies already. But we can't move till we hear from Horgan. Where is Horgan? Because of one rancher's stupid mistake, we face 2,000 Comanches with 200 men. All right, Sergeant. Put the entire fort in emergency status. Yes, sir. That's all. Second, the Colonel, pardon. This man started a riot in town with some of our soldiers returning to the fort. Well. Sergeant, have the men wait outside. I'll let them know when I need them. You please remain. It was the only way I could get here. My questions make some people nervous. Yeah, I know, I know. What about their answers? You know where Canal Canyon is? In the foothills of the Candelarias? Right. It's southwest of the crossing at Santo Cristo. Just past the mouth of the canyon is a small cabin. It's where Strobel goes when he wants to disappear. I think we can find that. I wish there were something more than thanks I could give you for what you do. It's not often you get even that for what you're doing. Guard! I want this man put in solitary for three days. And I want the men to pass the word what happens to people in Brackettville who don't respect the uniform of a United States trooper. That's all. Sergeant, you and I are riding toward the Rio Grande with a full patrol. A full patrol, sir? Right. Those Mexican federales have been getting a little too suspicious of me lately. Yes, sir. It was too close for comfort the last time we crossed the river. Mm. The full patrol is to ride along parallel to the Rio Grande on the United States side, as though looking for a place to cross into Mexico. I hope this will bring the Mexican sentries along with them. In the meantime, you and I will be waiting two miles upstream, waiting for a chance to slip into Mexico. Just the two of us, sir? I don't relish it any more than you do, Sergeant. Leaving immediately, sir? No. No, let's wait until daybreak. That way, there'll be more likelihood that we'll be seen. Yes, sir. Under secret orders, the two men rode south and west toward the Rio Grande. Many times, Colonel McKenzie and his raiders had entered Mexico in pursuit of marauders and Apaches. And each time, it was with the knowledge it could be the last. International law forbade trespassing by the American cavalry. Once beyond the Rio Grande, caution became the byword. But time dictated haste. Little more than 24 hours remained before Black Hand's Comanches would make war. Horgan said the cabin was just in the mouth of that canyon. Let's tether the horses here and go in on foot.
I get you, Sergeant? Just my leg, Colonel. Cover the one I hit. Don't shoot until I tell you. Mackenzie! It was bad timing. Come on out, Colonel. I'll ask you one more time. Then Cobb will shoot your man. Sergeant? He's got me caught on picket, sir. Now, Mackenzie. Throw your gun down. For a moment, I thought you brought your troopers with you. How much of your ammunition did you put in the stove? Mackenzie! All this firing. A Federalist patrol might hear it. You wouldn't want the Mexican army to catch you down here, would you? No more than you would, Strobo. Oh, yeah. You know about the price of my head? I do. All right, it's a standoff, then. We both can't afford to get caught. I'll make a bargain with you. You're going back with me, Strobel, to stop a Comanche war. Why don't you take Cobb's buddy? You can tell them he's the one. No one would know the difference. <laughs> All right, drop the gun. I've got one bullet left. Standing Elk has seen with his own eyes that Mackenzie Colonel has kept his word. It is not the custom of our people to put wrongdoers behind bars. We have simpler methods. Uh, yes, I know. The customs of our people differ, Chief. But justice is served in both cases. I must say you had me a little worried, though, with your three-day ultimatum. Because of Mackenzie Colonel's straight tongue, if necessary, Standing Elk could have given him three and a half. Mackenzie's Raiders rode again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. Ride with Mackenzie's Raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making. I don't know how much time I've got, but I've got plenty of money. What are you getting at? I won't rest easy, and neither will my kin, until we even the score with those savages.
I never saw so much of nothing in my whole life, Colonel. A dozen Apaches could be right under our noses. Uh, no doubt they're sneaky. Reckon we'll ever see the last of them. Wonder how often they've asked that question about us. Colonel, Apaches over there. No, it's a Comanche hunting party. Well, I can't say I'm sorry. I wish all Indians were as peaceable as they are. I can remember when they weren't so peaceable. So can you, Sergeant. I sure can. Reckon they'll find any game over there? They got a deer, I'll give them my shirt for a nice hunk of that venison. You getting sick of fat back and beans? Just about like you, Colonel. Here, follow me, at a gallop! Why? I don't know. Let's find out. From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. West Texas, 1875. Although many Indian nations had made peace with the settlers, the Apaches still sought revenge from those who had invaded their land. Billy Stone fought valiantly for his life. gagging around this fort, my son was scalped. I've heard enough. I'm sorry about what happened to Billy. You... They're headed east.
Tracks lead into Richard Stone's range line. Well, maybe Stone or one of his men saw him. Might know who they are. Maybe. Every time I come this way, I like to stop and just look at it. Stone may have paid too high a price for it. Yeah, I reckon you're right. What with the Indian scalp and his son last month on top of everything else? She was a remarkable woman, Ronald. I wish you could have known her. You'd have liked her. I'm sure I would have. I never remarried. She begged me to when she was dying, but there was never another one like her. Oh, can I offer you something? Uh, no, thank you. Well, uh, what are you doing out here? Right to the point, Rich. You are sorry, but you know what I'm up against. And you know the Apaches. You've been in this country 30 years. You ought to know them. There just aren't enough men to patrol this whole territory. We do the best we can. As for my men lollygagging around, as you put it, they're on duty 16 hours a day. I've got 1,500 square miles to patrol, 1,500 square miles. I've got reports of Apache raids here, and here, and here at Bitter Creek, and then again up here at Stanton's Crossing, 400 miles away. I can't do the impossible. The fact remains, my son is dead. You're the army. What are you going to do about it? Rich, Rich, there's nothing I can do about it. By now, those Apaches are a hundred miles away. I'm not talking about just those Apaches. I'm talking about every mother's son of them. I've spent over half my life fighting them. They killed my two sons. They killed... They killed the woman who bore them. I've built up the biggest spread in the entire state of Texas. For what? For the dust of my family? Well, they haven't killed me yet. Oh, they have tried. But before they do, I'll avenge Billy and the others a hundred times over. It takes time, Rich. Time and men. Please give me the time. Ronald, we've been friends ever since you took over at this point. I'm sorry for what I said. I understand, Rich. I understand. I don't think you do. You said it takes time. But you forgot one